Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and today we're going to watch parts of Isaac Isatan's video called Money, which dealt with the crash of the Argentine banking system in 2001 and the development of the 7 million strong barter networks they used to save themselves. And of course, that's happening now in Greece, and we'll see it happening more around the planet. So, Isaac Isatan's video, Money. In a working-class suburb of Buenos Aires, hundreds of people newly impoverished by the nation's economic crisis gather several times a week at this disused factory to take part in their own self-help solution to the disaster. This is a barter market, one of thousands which have sprung up throughout Argentina thousands. to fill some of the gaps left by the collapse of mainstream business. Here, trading is carried out using coupons called creditos, which can only be used inside the club. The country's national currency, the peso, plays no part in here at all. The network of barter markets has become a parallel economy. Barter club coordinator Ruben Rivera says, today, six years after the first club was founded, there are 1,400 of these markets linked through a powerful network with more than 150,000 members, which gives us a total number of people who you could say are affected by this type of exchange outside the formal economy of something over half a million. Okay, so in 2001, he says there's about 150,000 actual members. Then a couple of years later, um, Julio Archette said that there was 2 million to 7 million. So that really grew fast. And what else are you going to do? It's either sit there, use the new kind of money, or don't use any money at all. De algo más de medio millón de personas. It's not only homemade clothing and other such goods that are traded in the barter clubs. People exchange food they've produced themselves and even services such as hairdressing, doctors, dentists and psychiatrists. Barter clubs don't pay any tax, but they're tolerated and even encouraged by the government because they act as a safety valve for the volcano of social discontent. That's Same reason why time banks aren't taxed in the United States because they were going to, say, if a little old lady uh, cuts a young man's hair and he mows her lawn and they should have charged each other ten bucks, they're going to lose it off their checks. And, uh, and it, the IRS decided that to relieve, relieve the pressure on governments by these people doing it themselves, they're not going to bug the governments to do it, they're going to make those transactions non-taxable, just like in Argentina. ...boiling up because of mass unemployment. These women said the barter club is the only way they can feed and clothe their children. We haven't got money to work in a traditional market, so we come here out of necessity. I sew and do crochet and sell what I make, and the barter club helps me save money for things like paying my household bills. Freeze up cash. This has become a way of life for us. The economic crisis is affecting all of us, and this is a way of earning our daily bread with dignity. Everybody in Argentina is bartering now because there simply isn't any work and the advantage is that you can buy everything. With the country's official currency, the peso, collapsing, the use of barter has now spread into the mainstream economy. Wholesale vegetable markets have begun accepting creditors for produce, which is then traded in barter markets. A wide variety of businesses, including law firms, insurance companies and psychologists, have begun accepting creditors as payment. People advertise in newspapers to barter bigger items, such as washing machines, cars and even apartments. One plumber was actually given an apartment in exchange for installing all the pipework in a new building. But the true heart of the barter philosophy is to be found in these crowded markets. Ruben Rivera says a lot of people come from chronic unemployment or sometimes from the absolute impossibility of ever having access to work and starting from these modest tables where they put themselves at the service of other people through a product or a service these people gain fortitude which enables them to hold their own in the global economy more strongly. economic crisis gathers 
Isn't that nice how people who could never get a job by finding ways of offering services to the barter markets become empowered? And even among those who have jobs, some are being remunerated in kind by their employers because they simply don't have the cash to pay them, as evidenced by entire boxes full of consumer items being brought to the barter markets by employees to trade for things they really need. Think about it. If you had a big barter market in your town and your boss couldn't pay you with cash and he offered just some product which you could go take to the barter market, solves your problem, doesn't it? But it may be in places like this that we should be looking for a glimmer of hope for Argentina, rather than to the banks and the international investors. Because the barter markets reflect the country's tradition of fighting back against adversity. And if the economy is to stage a comeback, it's more likely to start from the energy of ordinary people rather than from globalization, which has so far brought them nothing but misery. And as this is the only part of the economy that's actually growing, the way things are heading, Argentina looks like becoming one big barter club. Think about that. Nothing else is working except time banking. A nice class of broke people. From my peaceful middle-class living room in a rich country, I bear witness to the collapse of a country. Argentina is in deep financial crisis. The government, the banks are running out of money. How does money run out? How can countries as rich as Turkey and Argentina find themselves on the brink of bankruptcy? In order to understand, I set out to investigate. Little did I know that I would discover the hidden side of money. Argentina! Protesting! At the end of last year, the banks were already in crisis. Then a period of massive withdrawal started. People realized that the banks were on the verge of bankruptcy and rushed to empty their bank accounts. At this point, the Cavallo government decided to impose a Coralito a measure which prevented depositors from recovering their savings. Okay, now that's what you saw the people protesting in advance, the Coralito. That's when the banks shut down, you can't get your money no more. Why did the government do this? To save the banks. Ah, back in Argentina, good times! It's the only bank note that I have, but there are plenty more, he says. It's worth 20 credits. There's also some worth 10, 5, 2, and 1. It's not money, it's a credit. A little piece of paper. You can buy what you need. Clothing, food. When you got no money for stores, what else are you going to do? How much is it? Two credits, my dear. When they first come here, people use their, sell their used goods, their clothing, their shoes, blenders, television, videotape recorders. The Argentine economy collapsed. This is a parallel economy. We use credits because there aren't any pesos anymore. And when all these little parallel economies in different countries of survivors link up together, 
then it becomes the global economy, the global underground economy. The credit is like the peso, it's our work. You know our shit, global barter network. You can call it money, but that wasn't our intention. We simply use it to represent the value of work. It's what we've always done. When I had a job, they paid me in money. And with this money, I could buy bread from the baker. I was bartering. I bartered my work for bread. I used money as a tool. Today, I do exactly the same. I work, and in exchange, they give me a ticket that's worth the value of my work. And with this ticket, I go to a bartering fair and buy the same bread. I exchange my work for bread. The only difference is the tool. Poker chips. My job gives me pesos, pay my taxes, my rent, etc. With the credits I earn here, I can fill the fridge. I can even afford shoes and clothes. I buy things for my son, gym equipment, CDs, software. Yes, credits are like money. In the province of Buenos Aires, people even pay their electricity. And their taxes with credits. That's not the case in another place. That's the holy grail, being able to pay your taxes with your credits, because then everybody will take it. Same with electricity. Everybody pays electricity, so everybody will take those chips if you can pay electricity with them. Credits are like money, except it's not a legal tender. It allows you to go to all the barter fairs in the network. Anywhere in the country. It's an alternative to a crisis. We use credits because we have no money. For example, I'm paying for this manicure with the credits. I got to selling my own merchandise. Previously, we had the peso. When it disappeared, we asked ourselves, what can we do? And we invented a new currency. Simply put, we said, does this have a value? Do you trust the credit that I'm offering you? Do you agree that it's worth what I'm telling you it's worth? Do you give it credibility? If yes, okay, you'll accept it. It's not only a job, we're like one big family. If you don't come in one day because you're sick, the others ask about you. And that's what all the Let's reports over the news for the last decades were always about. How people would say, I just love my community now that I have this support network of people I know who'll help me if I got no cash. It's nice, we don't feel alone. My husband works in construction. My son studies law, he's not working yet. She pays for his studies with what she earns here. I buy all that I need for my home. Food, household items. And with my husband's income, we pay for what must be paid pesos. <laughs> We've had a thousand percent growth rate in the last three or four months. Before the crash, we were a million and a half, two million people. Today we're around seven million users, and the money circulating in our bartering clubs is equivalent to several billion dollars. Think about that. Seven million people not paying any interest to the banks to use the chips. <laughs> if we refer to an international currency like the dollar. The Argentinians invented the credit out of economic need. Thanks to the credits they loaned us, we've created almost 50 jobs.
Luis Ramirez. We only used 18,000 credits out of the 30,000 received, but we've generated 50,000. This network allows for control of our money through production while supporting the community. So with the money made from producing this sweater, de esta prenda nosotros lo permite we were able to produce bread and pastries si lo quieren ir a ver abajo lo van a poder firmar después for the school cafeterias eh, factura, churro y pan para los comedores escolares in this way we exercise solidarity permite ejercer la solidaridad which forms the basis of the cooperative we get flour, eggs and oil from bartering trocamos eso, cambiamos, intercambiamos por otra cosa o lo pagamos por un crédito o no, todo eso it means everyone all together or no one at all otherwise we'll live in a system where a handful of people decide for the entire world these people are fine, supposedly because they have all they need even in excess they've stolen our dreams and dispossessed us of our means we said, they're ignoring us? Okay, we'll ignore them. If they don't give us the money we need, we'll create our own. My first political poem, why represent our collateral with their chips for a fee when we can represent our collateral with our chips for free? My journey is coming to an end. And I am now deeply convinced that the control of money is a prerequisite for democracy. It is perhaps even more important than the right to vote. Local currencies develop regional self-sufficiency, which is the basis for a healthy national economy and for sovereignty. Shouldn't local currencies become a model for national currencies? Shouldn't local let's become a model for Canada Let's and maybe Uni Let's. Today there are over 3,000 various local currencies around the world, including Canada, and I got a list of them at my site johnturmel.com slash urlsnat.htm U-R-L-S-N-A-T dot H-T-M Not too updated, but it's big. Great video, eh? About that. Argentina and the desperation of the hungry kids, and next thing you know, the happy kids. Alright. So there's the good news, that when things get really, really bad, people have an easy alternative to set up an electronic barter system. And it works best if you also use paper poker chips, because that's really cheap and, you know, uh, doesn't take much manpower. So, finally, yeah. These barter fairs work fine for a bunch of desperate people. But to have to organize millions of people into a new kind of a money system, an alternate system, is a lot of work when it could be far easier done by governments paying their employees with small denomination government bonds. The Argentine solution that those provinces used, as well as the barter creditos. No, nothing wrong with people having interest-free credit and governments having interest-free credits too. Except that it happens faster if we can organize our unions into demanding to be paid with small denomination government paper. We see small denomination people paper works fine. Believe me, small denomination government paper works too. YouTube. Argentine pro uh, solution. So that's the good news on how we stand right now. Do we have to wait until we're broke and desperate and helpless and suffering before we get organized into our, our own let's lifeboat? Get organized right now before the crash. And like the lady said, if the crash hits, well, you're a little bit more insulated if you've got your things set up to go already. John the Engineer Termel, the Let's Baking Systems Engineer Termel, saying, Set it up because your life's at stake.